Hello everyone, this is Frank Ilo from Afi Design Studios. In today's tutorial, we shall be looking at how to create your site plan using the property line. Instead of importing your site plan from AutoCAD to Revit, you can go direct and create your site plan inside your Revit using the property line method so how do we go about that to start you have to make sure you are on the site view or site plan view currently we are on elevation so what we need to do we have to go to the project browser this is project browser make sure that whatsoever view you currently are you have to switch to your site view so coming to project browser here make sure you scroll up okay you can see your site here this is site double click on the site when you double click on the site it's going to bring out this view for you that has your roof plan once you are here go up there at the top of the screen at the massing and site tab click on it once you click on the massing and site tab it's going to bring out this ribbon the whole of this is called ribbon then come here in front of this site model site you can see this arrow or right under the building pad you can see it click on this arrow once you have done that it is going to bring this dialog box called the site setting here you are going to make your choice or choose the unit of your angle here I would advise you choose degrees so come under angle display towards the down parts you can see angle display here inside this field you see this arrow click on this arrow then select degrees once you have done this click on apply and click ok or you can go straight and just click ok they are the same thing so when, once you have done this come here on this ribbon you will see property line click on the property line once you've done that it's going to bring another dialog box called the create property line you have two options there option one is create by entering distances and bearings the second option is create by sketching but I would advise you to select the first option which is create by entering distances and bearing why do I say that because we are going to be entering the values and the values of the distances and the bearings of our site plan which is already existing but you make you choice use of this you choose this if you are to sketch direct but we are not sketching we are going to use the information on our survey plan so having said that I click on this after clicking on this it's going to bring out this property line dialog box at this point we are going to bring our survey plan to see the distances and the angles that we have on the survey plan now I'm going to go to my desktop to pick the survey plan I have there so I have to minimize this to do that but for me to minimize this this must have to be closed so I have to close this first then minimize this minimize this as well then I come to my desktop here is the survey plan I double click on this survey plan then you can see the survey plan we are using so having seen this let's go back to Revit click on this icon to bring Revit back then go back to property line then select create by entering distances and bearings 
then come here you will see the first row number one click inside that row and go there to your survey plan and check the first the value of the first distance you want to pick so i click here i want to start from here the one at the top side of the survey plan and that is 23 meters in other words 23,000 millimeters so i go here i go back to revit i type in 23,000. then i go back again to get the value of the angle the angle is 77.12 minutes so i go back here i put here 77 then i come here i put 12. okay for me to create the second row, I have to come here, beneath, under here, under the table, you will see insert. Click on insert. Then another row will be created. So I go back to my image. This is the second because if you are doing this, is you make sure you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. You don't do it randomly. So I've done this one, the one at the top. I'm doing the, sec the second one the one at the right hand side and that is 34,000 millimeters so I come here I put in 34 34,000 then what is the angle I go back to the angle again the angle is 158.12 158 158.12 .12. okay then I go to insert, click on insert to create another row. Then I go back to my image. This is the second one, 22 meters. That is 22,000 22, millimeters. So I come back here, 22,000, 23. Then I go back to so the image, 250.43. Two, 250.43. Then I come here, 250. 0.43. You don't need to type the points. Just 43 is enough. Now we have the last side of the survey plan remaining, but I don't need to go and start typing it. I can just close up my survey plan by clicking on Add Line to close. You can see this very box under the table. You can see it. Add Line to close. Once I click on this, it is going to help me to complete the drawing of the survey plan. Now, note this. It would help me to do that, but the values it is going to give me may not be exactly the same value with my last side, with the last, with the last side of the survey plan. But note this. The difference is very, very, very negligible. It is something you can neglect. Okay? So, it is better you do it this way and move ahead with your drawing instead of trying to get the actual value that you have on the actual survey plan. It may take you the whole day and yet you may not be able to close up the survey plan. So, I just click here, add line to close. It will, just, it will just give me the value that will close up the survey plan. You can see it here. So, but in the survey plan, this very distance is 36 meters. Dot. There is no 639 on it. It's just 36 meters. Why this is 336 degrees. But you can see 337. Let's go to the survey plan to see. So, you can see it. The distance is 36, not 36.639. And also, the angle is 336, 336, 336, and not 337, like we have it here. But then, it is very, very negligible. So, at this point, we are going to click close. Once you click close, you discover that the site plan is already magneted or attached to your cursor. 
if your cursor moves around, you will see that it is carrying the survey plan. Until you click anywhere, it will still be moving around. So it is left for you now to pick the most appropriate space or position where you want it to be. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to place it here for now. So I click here. Once you click, it will no longer move. It will now be stationed at a spot. And this is how to create your survey or your site plan using the property line. So you can see on this other side, you can create your road. The access road can be at the top side. Now, if you look at this and look at the one we have here, they are very similar. The access road is on the top side. You can now come here and create other things that would make up the, the actual site plan, like your road, your trees, the building itself, the proposed building. So you take it from there. But for this very tutorial, we are going to be ending it here. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Afri Design Studios. My name remains Frank Ilo. See you in the next tutorial.